George Monbiot, an environmental writer, recently covered a very important and growing issue. We're getting thirsty. And I don't mean that late night sneaky link. Okay, no, this is actually really serious, guys. Our water resources are depleting. My name is Isaias Hernandez and this is Queer Brown Vegan. My platform is to bring you environmental education that's focusing on intersectional issues rather than ignoring them. If you like what you see here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps grow my channel and bring you more educational content. So what's happening now? In a nutshell, we've maxed out our water usage, but the world still needs more according to a 2017 report. At least that's what has happened in order to meet the estimated food production needed to feed our growing populations. Or they say an increase in food production is what leads to population growth one way or another, but that's a different conversation. As climate change worsens, every one degree Celsius of warming leads to a 7% change in how much water our air can hold. So think about it this way, as Earth heats up, more water is held in the air, which means more droughts, drier and hotter summers, and more wildfires. And when it comes back down, it's more intense, so worse hurricanes and tropical storms. And in an inconsistent sort of pattern, not only are we seeing flash floods, we're seeing flash droughts. Where is this actually coming from. As much as we want to point out our lawns or how much water people are taking, the primary source is actually agriculture, which uses 90% of the world's fresh water. Think about that for a second. In a system that wastes one third of the waste it produces, that's like saying we're wasting 30% of the fresh water, and fresh water is very difficult to come by. We see some positive changes in water flow with things like the melting of the Himalayan glaciers actually helping bring more water to India and Pakistan, However, this growth in India and Pakistan is not such a good thing. Runoff from glaciers is expected to peak around 2050, but we'll see that project and speed up. So if agriculture is sucking up all of our water and then wasting a lot of it, then the same efficiency paradox with energy applies here as well. When things become more efficient, we tend to use it more and it cancels out the benefits from becoming more efficient in the first place. Farmers grow thirstier plants and or things that can make more money that couldn't be grown before. And this exactly is what happened in Spain in the Guadinia River Basin. What about finding new freshwater sources through technology like desalination? Surely that will save us? It would be a great solution, but if it weren't much for the fact that it costs five times and 10 times as much as water from the sky, it can also disrupt ecosystems and leaves a lot of toxic brine as a result. So desalination is not the solution. I think this conversation has been really picking up because it's expected that more armed conflicts will start as a result of water scarcity, which is terrifying. India and Pakistan have been in conflicts about water in their region. We're using tense relationships to rise in the US around the Colorado River. We need to see legitimate plans blending policy and economics to get serious about the water usage rather than allow corporations to do whatever they please. These impacts are not felt evenly and in the US, indigenous tribes in the West have historically been denied their water rights despite honoring and protecting the lands of generations. On the corporate side, most of our water is going to feed for dairy cows, popping up massive industrial agricultural practices. This is one of the key things that we have to change to save water or that we will change because we've run out of water. As consumers, this can look like boycotting dairy and even meat to starting the industry and shifting that demand. And as voter, this means paying attention to candidates who take climate seriously. As the passionate individuals into this industry or politics and becoming a vehicle for change in the long term. Water is a living system and a structure that allows multiple rhythms and there's been a lot of really beautiful research and spiritual research too that shows that water is a living entity. I mean indigenous communities have always said that, that water is not so much this item of non-living, it's a living entity. It breathes, it flows, it moves, it ripples. And one of the things that I always tell people is that we, we've seen the war for oil, the war on drugs, whatever. The next wars that we will see in the future in the upcoming decades, which I would hope not, is the war for water. And that's already happening in a lot of other countries of conflicts. But I, I tell people that it is really important for us to not just save water, but to understand that like, our water is precious. We cannot replace fresh water. Like the sea, 
is not water drinkable for us. And it's so important that as we continue to see that climate change is taking effect on water resources is that we try to build new ways to restore water infrastructure. And that can look easily into building localized systems for water routes or examining water quality in lakes and rivers nearby your homes and to ensure that um, it's meeting standards and also ensuring that there's no microplastics in your water through filters. But I know that these are all very small changes that at the end of the day, it's like, well, communities need fresh water now. It's, it's not the fault of low-income communities that are buying plastic water bottles. It's the issue of our governmental system that has allowed for large subsidies to go into these exploitative corporations that will eventually and continuously grow. And I think that's such an alarming issue to me is that you know that's why i feel that i'm so strong against animal agriculture and the industrialized system is that it's doing no good for anyone whether you're vegan or not like it does no good and it's only continuously to get worse i know in los angeles when we um experienced the water drought in 2010s um like 2013 we told we were told like not to use that much water and um, it's funny because celebrity houses use a lot of water and like it, it's funny to see how like low-income people are always going to be the ones punished first. So with water wars it is important that we understand that not only are we saving a living system but we are saving our souls, we're saving the other ecosystem, the other species that rely on fresh water. We consume a lot of fresh water because of our industrialized capital world. Now, thank you so much for watching and be sure to like the video and leave a comment with something you learn or a topic you'd like for me to explore. And subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Do you feel that water wars are going to become the next issue in the next decade? Let me know in the comments below.